everybody. Today I've got the carburetor off my John Deere 210. Uh, it's been a long time since it's been cleaned and it wasn't running the greatest. So I took it all off and blasted it with some carbon choke cleaner and uh, got it all clean. And what you want to do is blow through all these little holes where all your needles and stuff go and get them nice and clean and then blow through it with compressed air. Uh, you're going to need a carburetor rebuild kit. It comes with your bowl gasket, new needle and uh, seat, uh, float pin, and a couple little gaskets, and I'll show you all the other stuff. Uh, this was nine bucks on eBay, so definitely a lot cheaper than buying a whole new carburetor. All right, so we'll just do one thing at a time. So you got your new bowl gasket. And it's not going to drop right in there because it has to seal, so you just place it in there and just run around with your finger. It'll pop right in. See, and it makes a nice tight seal. Then I guess we can go ahead and get our uh, main jet that goes up through the bottom. They don't give you this new, but as long as it's not damaged, just make sure all the holes are clean. Just drop it in there and make sure it threads in straight. I'll have to tighten this up with a uh, straight screwdriver in a little bit. Then they give you a new uh, needle and seat. Just look like that. And they give you two little gaskets, a red one and a clear one. The clear one fits on the end of this. And uh, you'll be able to tell because the red one's way too big to work on there. And then it just uh, drops right down in that hole and makes sure your gasket's on there. And try to get it threaded in straight as best as you can. And uh, the best thing that works for this is one of these nut drivers that's somewhat deep because the socket's too thick to go down in there. So this is the best way I've found to get these in. And don't get crazy tight with it, but you don't want it to come out. All right, that's tight enough. Um, the next thing is you'll go ahead and drop your needle in. And it's best to do this while this is off the engine so you can hold it upside down so everything uh, fits in. Just make sure all your stuff's clean. The needle just drops in there and just sits. And then... Uh, get something to prop this up with. And I'll grab a straight screwdriver real quick. And just basically tighten this down until it stops. Again, you don't want to go crazy with it or you'll strip it out and then you will need a new carburetor. And it does thread down in there pretty deep. Alright, it stopped and it'll just go like a quarter turn. Alright, All right, so now it's halfway done. What you can go ahead and do is make sure your high speed needle and your low speed are all clean. Uh, the low speed goes right, and of course the needle fell out. The low speed goes right here on the side. Just make sure it threads in straight. And just turn it in until it lightly bottoms out with your fingers basically just until it stops. Alright, it stopped. And then move your throttle control out of the way. And this needle actually runs pretty far down. This goes inside of this main jet. Just drop it straight down in. And turn it. And it'll get below that and just go all the way down with it until it stops. The bottom of this needle was kind of messed up because somebody's gotten a little uh, too aggressive with it sometime before in its life. Alright, should be alright, just bottomed out. Okay. Alright, that's tight. That's tight. Let's go ahead and drop in our needle. And then you go ahead and put on this next gasket. Doesn't matter which way it goes, like up or down, but 
these two notches fit right there. It'll fit just like that. And you go ahead and get your float, which is not provided in the kit because these are pretty expensive. And uh, we'll go ahead and just slip it on. And they give you a new uh, pin to go with it. Alright, just gotta get it through the other side. And there's nothing that holds this in except for the carburetor bowl. And you can either get really picky with adjusting your float, or what I always do is make sure it sits pretty close to level, which mine is. So I'm just going to leave it. Uh, that could stand to be bent up a little bit, but as long as it sits relatively level, then you'll be fine. Which actually I might go ahead and adjust mine a little bit. I seem to. You can adjust this by bending a little tab. And I'll do this the easy way. The best way to take out your float pin is just get a magnet and just pop it right out. Which has always worked before, but this new pin is pretty tight. Or just get a pointy end of something and shove it through. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this and just get some pliers and bend this up a very little bit. Alright, and make sure when you shake your float you can't hear anything in there because if there's gas inside of it, it's going to stay down all the time and flood out your engine so you don't need a new float. Alright, so we'll get back here. Make sure your needle's still in there. And get that lined up again. Alright, it should go through. Come on, Pam. Sometimes these can be a little temperamental. There we go. It'll eventually sit there. There, now it sits pretty level. And you want to go ahead and check and make sure your needle moves up and down freely. Which this one is now, but it never hurts to take a little bit of carb cleaner and lubricate it. That's what I usually do. Alright. Now we need to do is take our bowl, which uh, that's just like pitting and stuff, but you want your bowl to be clean and just make sure all your stuff is centered. Just drop it on there, right in the center. And take your uh, your uh, drain plug, which this isn't the correct one, but it works. And we'll get our new gasket, which is the last thing that came in the kit. Throw that on there, and then drop it in there. And try to make sure that gasket is pretty well centered. Make sure you're even around all the stuff. And I believe this is a half inch. So go ahead and tighten it down. You don't want to get crazy with it by any means, but it does need to be snug. All right, that's plenty. And this will start to uh, to kind of pinch out. That's the way these carburetors are. All right, so now you need to adjust these. I'll have to uh, look and see what they are. I'm pretty sure they're both around two, uh, turns out, but I'll need to look to make sure. So, uh, yeah, the next part you see, we'll go ahead and get it thrown on the tractor and see how it runs. Hey everybody, 
Uh, here's the second part of the carburetor rebuild video. I just wanted to show you what it looks like back on the tractor. Uh, it's raining out right now and it's not very nice. And I'm not going to start this in here because, well, for obvious reasons. But uh, I just wanted to show it to you guys back on the tractor. It used to be black because it was all dirty and now it's this really uh, nice aluminum color like it used to be. And this runs a lot better. I can go all the way from full throttle and back to idle and it doesn't die or miss or sputter or anything so that even just putting a carburetor kit really helped. And if you notice the quality is a little bit different I did get a new camera. It's a Nikon Coolpix AW110. So I'll probably be using this some. I'll probably still use my iPod depending on where I'm at. But, uh, yeah, so, hope this video helped everybody learn how to rebuild a carburetor. It's not very hard, and, uh, it can really be worth it in the end. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody.